Hey everyone! No devlog this week, unfortunately. I'm studying for my final, so I don't have 25 spare hours to put on a devlog. But I still wanted to release something this week, so today we're gonna talk about how to get started with game development. I'm gonna list multiple paths you can take to start your journey, even if you have never coded in your entire life. There's gonna be three types of people that wanna get into game dev. People that don't know how to code and don't wanna learn, people that don't know but want to learn, and people that can already code. Don't worry, whatever category you're part of, you can still learn how to make games. You'll just have to use a different path to get to your end goal. All these solutions and paths I'm gonna offer in this video are completely free, so don't hesitate to start using them right away. Stick until the end because I also have some good general advice for everyone that's trying to learn, no matter the background. Let's start with the first category, people who don't code and don't want to code. There are multiple reasons for why someone doesn't want to learn to code. It can be a very complex thing to learn and it can also be very, very time consuming. Despite the many challenges that you can encounter while learning this, I'd still recommend everyone to give it a try. It's a very valuable tool that can help anyone in their day-to-day -day life. However, if you still don't want to learn, that's fine, I have just the right things to show you. No code engines. Like their name suggests, they're engines you can use without any coding knowledge. There's multiple no-code engines out there, such as Scratch, Game Maker Studio, Soba, or RPG Maker, for example. Of course, these aren't the only ones, and there are plenty others out there. Scratch is a browser application, meaning you don't even need to install anything on your computer to get started. This one is very beginner-oriented, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to anyone that has a specific project in mind. However, it's very useful to learn the basics of visual scripting. Visual scripting is pretty much at the core of no-code game dev. The way it works is that you basically build the logic of your game with blocks that give specific instructions to specific actors in your game. The key thing to know with these engines is to choose the one that matches your needs. If you want to make an RPG, well, RPG Maker is probably the best choice for you because it's specially designed to do so. However, if you want to learn something that allows you to build any idea you want, there are very powerful engines that allow visual scripting, like Unity and Unreal. Those will however be much harder to master, but if you stick to it, you can make anything happen. The second type of people are the ones that want to learn code for the sake of game dev. Like I said earlier, knowing how to code is a very good tool to have under your belt. It will really help you unlock the full potential of all the engines you're gonna use, but it's gonna take a bit of time before you get comfortable with that new skill. However, once you learn your first language, the hard part is done and you can start learning other languages a bit easier. First of all, you need to decide beforehand what language you're gonna want to learn, as there are many that can be used for game dev. The two most common though are C Sharp and C++. C Sharp is mainly used in Unity, while C++ is used for Unreal Engine. There are multiple other engines, however, Godot, for example, which is another engine, can use both. Personally, I am a bit biased while it comes to this, because my first language I learned was C Sharp specifically for Unity. However, both languages are very, very good options. I must say, C++ is notoriously harder to learn, but if you get good at it, any other language will not be a problem for you. If you choose to go with C++, I salute you. You have a hard journey in front of you. The best way to learn both languages for game dev, in my opinion, is to go on Unity's learn page or Unreal's learn page, depending if you choose C Sharp or C++ respectively. These can guide you step by step to not only learn the basics of your chosen programming language, but also the basics of how to use the engine itself. Unity has some great beginner projects that give you all the assets you need and hold your hand to show you how to build them together in a finished product. These activities really are the best to learn in my opinion. While coding tutorials are super helpful, they're frankly kind of boring. The fact that you can learn while creating is a big advantage and can seriously help you stay motivated to reach your goals. Once you're done with one of these small beginner projects, you can consider taking the basic scripting course on Unity Learn. This course is 100% free and will teach you all you need to know about using C Sharp in Unity. Unreal also has a lot of similar things you can do on its Learn platform. The last category of people we're gonna talk about are people with coding experience that want to get into game dev. Already knowing how to code is a big advantage to have, of course. However, it doesn't mean learning game dev will be easier for you than anyone else. 
Of course, you won't have the same extra step as someone who has to learn coding from scratch, but learning the engine you're gonna use and how your language of choice works within that engine is gonna take some getting used to. To learn how the engine works, I recommend doing a course on your chosen engine's web page. Once you're done with that, the best way to learn is to practice. Start building small projects you have in mind. It can be copies of existing games. Trying to recreate small arcade mobile games is a very, very good way to get started. Why not recreate a cheap copy of something like Flappy Bird or Geometry Dash just for the sake of it? Even if these might not feel like significant projects, you'll learn a lot about every component needed to make a game and how to assemble them together in a finished product. Another option is to follow project tutorials online. There are many series on YouTube dedicated to building a project from scratch and the people will guide you step by step on how to do so. For example, Brackies has a wonderful 3D RPG from scratch series where it takes you everywhere from code to UI and animation and helps you build a finished RPG by the end. Whatever path you choose to take, here is some general advice you should keep in mind while learning. Something very, very important to keep in mind is do not start with a big project. Usually when we want to learn game dev, it's because we have a genius idea in mind. However, trying to build that idea while you're inexperienced will most likely lead to disappointment and burnout. Instead of starting with your dream project, start smaller. Completing a small project will teach you a lot more than starting a big one and then abandoning in it because your code broke or you got lost in your structure. Game dev can be very complicated and it's gonna take some time for you to learn how to manage every component needed to make a game. Speaking of the many components, game dev has many aspects to it. Art, 3D modeling, level design, code, sound effects creation, and much, much more. Getting good at all of them is possible. We've seen it in great solo devs such as Concerned Ape, who single-handedly created Stardew Valley, one of the most successful indie titles of all time. However, it takes years of practice to get to that point. So do not be afraid of using pre-made assets to cover parts of your game you're not comfortable with making yourself. There is a ton of free models, sprites, sound effects and graphic elements available online for free. Use this to your advantage. I can understand that some people, myself included, feel like if they make a game, they should have made everything by themselves. But using assets made by other people will speed up your development so much. Plus, using those doesn't stop you from making your own at the end. If you finish your project and you decide you want to remake the art of everything yourself, go for it. But don't let your weaknesses in certain aspects prevent you from creating what you like. For example, personally I have no idea of how to make 3D models. But if I want to make a 3D game one day, I can't let that stop me. If I decide I want to learn everything and make all the models myself, I'll spend hundreds of additional hours on the project and end up with a result that might not be even that good. Little bonus tip. Don't be afraid to use every resource that's available. ChatGPT is a good resource when learning. If you don't understand how something works, you can paste it in it and you'll get a solid answer of how things work internally. Of course, I wouldn't recommend using it to copy every single bit of code because first of all, it might not work, ChatGPT is not perfect, and second of all, you won't learn anything doing so. But using it intelligently can really help you progress faster in your journey. And finally, this last tip is good for anything that you're trying to learn in life. Consistency is key. Don't burn yourself out. Don't force yourself to watch tutorials for 8 hours a day. Just do a little bit every single day. Doing 30 minutes a day for 2 months will take you much further in your learning journey than doing an intensive week and then stopping because of burnout. If you have any questions regarding game dev, make sure to leave them in the comments. I'll reply to everything. Oh, phone. <clears throat> Sorry, but yeah, um, leave your questions in the comments. I'll answer everything. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. 65% of the people who watch aren't subscribed and it will really help me out if you were. Stay hydrated and I'll see you next week with another video, hopefully a devlog this time. Bye!